Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Well, of course I'm grateful, Mr. Hamlin. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I realize that, sir. It's a good break for me. Thank you. I know. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. I'll get right on it. Yes, bye, sir. As soon as you stop groveling and get off your knees, you'll get right on what? Uh, Jerry? Jerry, have you ever heard of a television show called The Mating Game? Sure, it's your secretary's favorite. She can tell you all about it. Is that right? No. Uh, uh, Nancy, would you come in here a second, please? Thank you. Is that the assignment? A feature article, my own byline. Yes, sir? Nancy, you watch a show called The Mating Game. Will you tell me about it? Oh, well, it's really groovy. They get this girl and these three men who've never seen each other before. And the girl asks the guys personal questions. And then the guy tries to be witty and say something funny. But sometimes he says something embarrassing and everybody laughs. <laughs> then the girl goes out with one of them. Well, it's sort of like a cocktail party. <laughs> well, thank you, I guess. <laughs> Is that all? Yes, Nancy, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Look, Don, if you don't feel it's your kind of thing, tell Hamlin. No, 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 it's fine. If I can just find an interesting slant on it. Well, uh, mull it over. Maybe something will occur to you. I just mulled. <laughs> Suppose I personalize it. Find a girl, put her on the show, and write her experiences firsthand. Not bad. What? Yes. Perfect. Send her in. But do you think you can find a guinea pig? I've got one. Only she's more like a pussycat. Who? Hi, Donald. That girl. How about a little lunch to celebrate? To celebrate what? Come on, we'll talk about it in the restaurant. No, no, we'll talk about it here. I hate to make a scene in public. Okay, okay. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, now, let's see. You're an actress, right? There's a rumor to that effect. What's the best thing for an actress? Acting. Wrong. Exposure. And how would you like to appear on network television in front of 30 million people? As what? As Anne-Marie. Bright, lovely, and charming. All right, Donald. Now let's start again. And this time, try it one simple declarative sentence at a time. I've been assigned to do a story on a television show called The Mating Game. Next sentence. I want you to be a contestant on that show. Next. Recording a subject's reactions to the whole experience from start to finish will give me the angle I need. Is me the subject? No, me is the predicate. You is the subject. I don't want to be the subject, Donald. Now, I've seen that show. And girls only go on that to meet boyfriends. And I already have a boyfriend. Right. A boyfriend who's asking you to do him a favor. Well, I just can't do that. I mean, I mean, stand up on that stage. I'm an actress. I know how to do acting parts. Well, what if I make a fool of myself in front of all those people? Look, Anne, there isn't that much to do. You just go up and talk to the producer and charm him so he puts you on the show. It's no big deal. Not to you. I'm the one who has to ask those strange boys all those personal questions. Do you believe in love at first sight? And, and do you kiss on a first date? And... Oh, I thought you two went to lunch. Well, we're just about to. Jerry, what would you say if one night you turned on your television set and there I was, flirting with three strange men? I'd say, hey, there's Anne Marie, the actress, playing herself on the mating game. You know about it. <laughs> You don't think it's unprofessional? Not at all. Neither would 30 million other viewers with their eyes all glued to you. That's 60 million eyes. <laughs> all focused on Anne Marie. You really think I should do it? Sure. Come on, honey, what do you say? Well, okay. Great. I'll set up an interview with a producer. You'll be my personal guinea pig. 
I, I mean, uh, Pussycat. Uh, let's go. Thanks. Wait! It's not even. It's straight, it's straight. I'm uneven. I'll have to do this part over. Oh, will you please hurry? Please hurry. Oh, that show is so romantic. Three gorgeous men to choose from. When I was going with my husband, Alvin, I had the same problem. What problem? I had to choose between Alvin and Herbie. Oh, I'm going to be so late. I decided to have one last date with each one and then choose. As you know, I chose Alvin. Yeah. What made you decide on Alvin? Herbie never showed up. <laughs> OK, OK. You're done. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Louise. Thanks for everything. Now, don't forget, lock up. OK. And what? If you can get a plug for my dress on the show, I'd appreciate it. OK, I'll try. Bye. And what? Remember me to Don. No, don't. You're not supposed to know him. <laughs> Ah, Miss Marie, yes. thank you for dropping by. Oh. This is Mr. Hollinger. Well, how do you do? Awfully nice to meet you, Mr. Hollinger. Uh, Hollinger. Oh, sorry. He's doing a story for his magazine. Oh, News View. What a marvelous publication. How did you know that? What? Well, did I say News View? No, I did. Well, that's what I mean. How did you know? Oh, well, I've probably seen his name on many articles. Donald Hollinger. Hollinger. <laughs> oh, yes. Mr. Hollinger will be doing... Hollinger. I... Don't mention it. He's doing a, an article on our show. Uh, would you be seated, please? Certainly. Of course, your application will give us uh, all of the vital statistics, but I just wanted to meet you and uh, have you answer a few questions. You don't mind if Mr. Hollinger sits in? Oh, no, not at all. As long as the questions aren't too personal. <laughs> <laughs> we try to get to the basic human being. You see, to me... The mating game is not just a show. Oh, no. It's a goal. Faith. A mission with a high Nielsen. <laughs> now, I don't like to brag, but do you know that over 30% of the contestants from the mating game marry the dates that they met on our show? Is that so? Love is blind, Mr. Hollinger. But then Dan Cupid gets a little help from Eddie Turner. And Eddie Turner gets a little help from the stars. Now, you're a Scorpio. Yes. Warm-hearted, but very determined, huh? That's amazing. Well, don't be surprised. I know the zodiac signs of everyone who walks into this room. Mm. Well, Miss Marie, with the moon in its fourth quarter and mm. just on the cusp, I think you're going to be a wonderful guest on the mating game. Oh, thank you. Isn't that wonderful, Donald? <laughs> Mr. Hollinger? Oh, well, it certainly is. Uh, Miss Marie. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye, and thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I think she's going to be one of them. What, one of what? The marrying kind. All I have to do is supply the right combination. She's a Scorpio. I'll need a Leo, a Taurus, and a Libra. Say, uh, when's your birthday? September 26th. Leap. Are you married? No, no, I'm not. A bachelor and a Libra? Perfect. P perfect for what? The show. You're going to be one of the contestants. But remember, if you see Miss Marie, you're not allowed to tell her. Well, how'd you do? Well, it's all set. And guess who's going to be one of the contestants? Rock Hudson. No. <laughs> But you're close. Me. <laughs> you're kidding. It was the producer's idea, and nobody's supposed to know about it, especially Ann. I'm going to disguise my voice. Oh, what a terrible, dumb idea. What are you talking about? It's a very harmonious time for Scorpio and Libra. Forget about Scorpio and Libra. Are the other guys good looking? <laughs> well, I guess so. Suppose she picks one of them. Well, what if she does? They go out on a date and they never see each other again. Congratulations! You've just won the Ostrich of the Year Award. Oh, look, I know Ann pretty well. I don't care how good-looking or charming those guys are. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. It doesn't bother me a bit. Then how come you're sharpening your pen? <laughs> and here he is now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mating Game himself, Bob Williams!
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there, love lovers. Welcome to the mating game. Hidden behind our petition are three eligible young men. Our charming female guest will ask them questions about love and then choose the man she'll date. You got it? Our first young lady is Miss Anne Marie. She's an actress. But before we bring her out, let's meet the fellows. Contestant number one, Mr. Peter Blake. Pete's a bachelor with a steady job. Uh, any chance our guest tonight will change that, Pete? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, girls usually find me very easy to resist. <laughs> Eduardo Guzman, our number two contestant, is a playboy and a ladies' man from south of the border. I uh, hope you're taking our game seriously tonight, Eduardo. Well, anything to do with ladies, I take very seriously. <laughs> and finally, contestant number three, Don Hollinger, a reporter from Newsview magazine. Now, he is the only one who's ever met our guest before. They uh, seem to like each other then. How about it, Don? Will she remember and uh, choose you? Well, to be fair, I'm disguising my voice. Even if she doesn't remember, I hope she'll choose the new me. <laughs> well, let us remember our contestants are entitled to the big triple date bonus. Tonight, dinner at one of the most elegant restaurants in town. Tomorrow night, tickets to the Broadway hit of their choice. And Thursday night, the opening of a brand new show at the Copa. So, will you please come out now, Miss Anne Marie? Hi there, Anne. Hi. So, you're an actress? Yes, I am. And a very pretty one, too. Thank you. Certainly wish you a lot of luck. Won't you uh, please sit down? Al, Anne, you uh, know the rules of the game. Why don't you start the questions? Thank you. Uh, contestant number one, would you describe your idea of the perfect wife? Uh, well, I guess she'd be a woman who likes to cook and sew and clean. Uh, she'd enjoy doing the dishes. Uh, she'd be the sort of woman who'd uh, have to tidy up after me a lot. <laughs> Sounds like you'd do better with a mother. Well, that's what Mom says. <laughs> At contestant number two, define masculine charm. I believe it's the ability in a man that makes the woman feel that he only sees her virtues. Oh, that's lovely. I mean, that's just lovely. And phony, too. I beg your pardon? Uh, never mind. Number three, do you think a woman can successfully support a career and a marriage? Well, in certain cases, a woman might have to make a career successful in order to support a marriage. What does that mean? Why don't you ask contestant number two? <laughs> Uh, contestant number one, do you believe in kissing on the first date? Oh, gosh, that, that all depends on the girl. Uh, contestant number two? Uh, what else is there? Contestant number three? No. And if she's got a boyfriend, she shouldn't even be dating. Well, you don't have to get angry. Uh, contestant number three, uh, do you drink? Yes. Uh, contestant number one? Oh, not hot liquor. Number two? I love champagne. The bubbles tickle his nose. <laughs> I'm very confused. Number three, I have a feeling that you... Sorry, Anne. Time's up. Well, our three eligible bachelors have answered your questions, and now you must decide which one of these young men will be the date who could become your mate. Will it be number one, number two, or number three? Will it be number one, number two, or number three? Well, I choose number two. <laughs> Donald, why didn't you tell me you were on the show? I wasn't allowed to. Oh, that voice you used sounded terrific. Yeah, well, if you liked it so much, why didn't you pick me? I was so nervous and so mixed up. And anyway, number two sounded so romantic. Well, I don't know. He, he was just so suave and, and so charming and everything. And he seemed to know the perfect thing to say. And I mean, not as charming as you, of course. And anyway, he'll be a better story for your assignment. And, and it's only one date and everything like that. Everything like what? Well, you know. Yeah, well, I'm going to know because I'm going on your date. You are? Well, the, the interview, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. You sound disappointed. Oh, it's not that. I... Well, what is it? 
Donald, you're shouting. What are you so angry about? Well, you just humiliated me in front of the entire world. But I didn't even know it was you. Anyway, this whole thing was your idea. You were great, Scorpio. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Wasn't she great? I mean, great. Say, have you seen that Sagittarius dentist? He's on next. Oh, oh there he is. Well, have fun. And if you and Eduardo need a marriage license in a hurry, you know who to call. Eddie Turner and Dan Cupid. It's a partnership. And I get top billing. <laughs> the guy's waiting. Oh, good. Oh, Eduardo, this is Donald Hollinger. That's right, you've already met. Shall we go? Yeah, well, I'll get my equipment. I'll see you out front. He's not coming with us. Well, yes, he is. You see, he's a reporter for a magazine. He's doing a story on us. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Greek restaurant before. It's so charming. Oh, yes. The Greeks have a marvelous sense of atmosphere. They appreciate the warm, the intimate. Testing one, two, three. Hello, hello. Donald, oh, well, that's a tape recorder. Well, good for you. You mean you're actually going to tape our conversation? I mean, that's actually exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> but, Mr. Hollinger, this Donald? is... Look, just relax. Enjoy yourself. Forget it's on. <laughs> now, what were you saying? Huh? Oh. I believe I was telling Anne about Greece. I think you like it there. In fact, I know you would. I would? Why? Well, it's difficult to put it into words, but I will try. <laughs> A land like Greece can be many things to many people. But there are certain special women who are able to give themselves totally to an experience. Women whose eyes search for the beautiful whose spirit longs for the joyful. Women who were born for the purpose of loving life, passionately, and of being loved. I think that you, Anne, are one of those women. Uh, Ed, could you repeat that? I ran out of tape. <laughs> Very persistent. I know. I really can't understand it. He's never acted like this before. You mean you know him from before? Well, uh, you see, he arranged for me to be on the show. Oh, he did? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm enjoying myself in spite of him. <laughs> I hope you are too. Yes. Uh, do you mind? Is this part of the interview? That, and it's good exercise. <laughs> Is that how they dance in Brazil? Donald, what are you talking about? Close. You were dancing close. Well, when one party dances with a second party, the two parties are generally within a few feet of each other. Well, speaking as a third party, the third party doesn't relish seeing the second party clutching at the first party. He was not clutching at me. Uh huh. Then how come you're not dancing as close with me as you were with him? Well, for one thing, because your tape recorder was digging into me. Uh, not that I blame him. Not that I blame him. For you, my dear, are a woman who is, how we say, a woman who enjoys the beautiful in life, the sunsets, the nightingales. Donald, I really don't believe it. You are behaving like a child. Yeah, and you're behaving like the woman from Never on Sunday. You're only saying that because we're in a Greek restaurant. <laughs> you heard me. You're a Jezebel, that's what you are. Oh, I choose number two. He's so charming. He is charming. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, I won't cramp your style. Donald! What about your story? Here's the tape recorder. Take down whatever you think is important. That button is record, that is playback. Make sure it's on balanced tone, and it's rented, so don't drop it. Goodbye, Miss Marie. Enjoy yourself. Donald! Donald. Yes? You're walking into the men's room. Well, don't you think I know that? Hi, Jerry. 
have a headache? <laughs> Thanks for the offer. Right now, a headache would be the high point of my day. I take it last night didn't go too well. Jerry, I made a complete idiot of myself. I, I mean complete, no stone left unturned. That bad? That bad. You know, so bad. So bad, I spent the entire evening in the men's room for no reason at all. I mean, I mean, there was a man in there to brush me off, but I didn't need it. I'd already been brushed off by Ann. Come on, Don, let's look at the bright side. That is the bright side. <laughs> Anything I can do to help? Yeah, load a revolver and leave it on the desk. I'll know what to do with it. <laughs> Come in, Nancy. Mr. Hollinger? Miss Marie? Yes. Here are the tapes you asked for. I trust you'll find them in order. Thank you, and goodbye. And wait a minute. Another run of triple tornadoes, please. <laughs> oh, Eduardo, I'm dizzy. Just watching that dance is too much for me. It's a traditional Greek folk dance. <laughs> but I have never seen anything so uninhibited, so primitive. Why, in an American nightclub, a man wouldn't dream of ripping off his shirt in the middle of a dance. That's how they do it in Greece. <laughs> well, it's terribly exciting. And when we get home, Eduardo, I'm gonna sew up that shirt for you. <laughs> oh, that's delightful. Shh, we're gonna wake up the neighbors. What time is it, anyway? Time? Oh, I guess it's around five in the morning. <sighs> wait, wait, I'll check. Oh. I can't see the numbers. Can you reach the light switch? The lights are off. They're, they're sitting there in the dark at 5 o'clock in the morning, talking, drinking. Let's not spoil the moment. Not spoiling moments. You know, I am being with you like this. A man knows the feeling of perfect contentment. I want to make this moment go on forever. Shut up. Why doesn't he shut up? Oh, Eduardo. Say something. Why don't they say something? Have another drink. Thank goodness he's only plying her with liquor. Oh, Eduardo. There are so many things I want to say to you. What this evening has meant. How sweet you were to do this for me. But mostly, mostly what I want to say is... Donald, you dope. You really had this coming to you for acting like such a crazy nut, and you really deserved it. And I hope you've learned your lesson. Because I'm waiting for you on the other side of the door. <laughs> you goof. Come here. this sweet what's that honey it's a note from eduardo he read your article in newsview and he asked me to tell you how much he liked it oh that's nice and i'd love to see you for dinner next saturday when i'm in town now donald don't worry i'm not going i certainly don't want to start all that crazy jealous business again no no actually i think you should accept you're kidding no i'm not after all he gave us all those theater tickets he let me be your date at the nightclub the guy deserves one enjoyable evening Oh, Donald, that's very nice of you. Honey, it's only fair. Well, I'll just tell him yes, then. <laughs> Good. But, honey, oh. this time we go Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> 